Hey folks, this is Shane and Patrick with SE Knives at Randall's Adventure and Training, and we're back again for another one of our favorite gear series videos. Um, man, we just got so many comments, so much, so many suggestions from you guys based on our last one. Today, we're going to start in with axes and saws. Patrick, what did you bring us today? Before we jump into it, I just want to take a second to thank everybody for watching our videos. Uh, your comments, your questions, all that would greatly appreciate it, and uh, also ideas for future videos. Yeah, yeah, your suggestions on future videos or stuff you'd like to see, put those in the comments below. All right, probably one of my favorite axes, I've had this one for several years, it's the H&B Forge Medium Camp Axe, I think it's actually called Medium Camp Hawk on their website now. 17-inch um, handle, hardwood uh, hickory handle, it's just a, it's a pulled tomahawk. Lightweight, maybe a pound and a half. Uh, I've used it in classes, used it on backpacking trips. Um, funny story, you know, I saw an axe James had and he had uh, inch marks burned into it. I thought, well, that's cool, you know, I might have to measure something. So I went and did the same thing. Uh, I'll be honest with you, that's been two or three years ago. I've never used that to measure anything. It looks uh, good. But it still looks cool. But um, yeah, great, great axe. Probably, you know, you'll have to look it up as far as price, but it's less than a hundred bucks. and. Now, I've used the heck out of it, and it's 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 held up. I think H and B calls those pulled axes mm -hmm. on their website. We'll we'll put a link down below, and are in the show notes up top. We'll put a link to all this stuff so you can find it. Great company. Don't have a huge presence on social media because they're too busy in the forge. Actually, mm -hmm. I think they're in out, out of Ohio. Ohio. Okay. All right. Next up is uh, a Grand's First Brooks uh, Wildlife Axe or Wildlife, uh, I guess, hatchet. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. I uh, got some leather work here for from uh, Red Nose Custom and also from my friend uh, over at Scablands Bushcraft with that. Um, one thing you might notice on, on probably all of our axes is, is Patrick and I oftentimes will reprofile uh, the heads mm -hmm. to our liking. Uh, it's also probably the reason why uh, Patrick won't, or I probably are not going to let you borrow our <laughs> axe. Uh, how many hours do you have into to reprofiling that? I have a lot. Hours. <laughs> yeah. So most of our stuff on the axe side, that I, I put as much pride and effort into my into the uh, edges on my axes uh, and my hatchets as I do my knives, and it's just not something I just want to hand somebody that could potentially go drive it into the ground or anything else. Uh, I have carried this this little axe, this little hatchet, quite a bit. I love the weight; it gets work done, fits well in a pack. Shaving sharp, you can choke up on it, do whatever you want to do with it. But uh, this has uh, been on many trips. If we've got to cut gin poles or do certain things, uh, it makes short work uh, of stuff in the woods, and uh, it, it's not too much of a, a burden to carry in a pack. All right, next up, um, another Gransfors. This is the Scandinavian Forest Axe. Um, Gransfors makes great products, razor sharp from the factory. Um, this is just a you know a factory leather sheath, 25 inch handle. You know a lot of their stuff is designed for softer woods like spruce and the different pines you know over in Scandinavia. But I've used this on oak and hickory here. You just have to be careful. You know it is a thin edge. You know, it's real thin. So you just want to take care of it. And you know I wouldn't use this to try to split a bunch of firewood. You could. Uh, but this is primarily a, um, a, a felling or a, a limbing axe. Um, but this is great. Limbed a lot of trees with it. You know, cut small trees down with it. And, and just another one of their great products. And what was the name of that one again? This is the Scandinavian Forest Axe by Gransford Brooks. Okay. All right. Next up for me is absolutely nothing special. Uh, this is a double bit axe I've had for a long time. And then I've got two boys that uh, somehow the... Uh, it, it turned up broken. We're not really sure how that happened. Um, the forest trolls, I guess, came in and, and, and broke my axe. Uh, but regardless, I rehatted this axe, and actually during the COVID time, I got kind of bored. And so when I rehatted the axe, I wanted to kind of give it uh, a little bit of character. So I burned the ends and have, I've sanded it and then ha have, have burned it, burned it in a little bit. Uh, I'm in the process of reprofiling the heads here. Um, it has been used quite a bit. Uh, I cleaned it all up, um, and uh, it's, it's, I need to work a little bit more on the edges here. Um, I don't have or use very many large axes, so this is kind of it for me. And what I'd kind of like to do is keep one one wide and then one a little more shallow yep. on the angles. 
and go from there. Well, so it turned out great. Yeah, that Beautiful. we've got a uh, some highlights I think on our Instagram page mm -hmm. where I, where I uh, did a story about it and put it on our highlights. So uh, there's about five different sessions of burning and sanding and then coming back and treating it with linseed oh. oil and it's it feels like oh yeah it's as smooth as glass. Pretty close to uh, smoothed out right now. It's probably going to be time to to hit it with linseed again. Uh, but I was kind of kind of happy with with hanging something again it's been a long time since i've done that took quite a bit of shaving down but uh there's way more money in this and labor than there yeah. is in the axe so well, if, you, if you paid somebody to do all that it costs yeah, quite a bit true true uh, this is the one i was talking about you know i'm i'm bad about marking up my stuff um split cut a lot of firewood and different people have different size um, fireplaces different size wood stoves so i marked an 18 inch 16 and 14 depending on who I'm splitting the wood for I can just hold hold a hand right there on the 18 mark hold it at the end of the log The end of the the handle is where I need to you know saw it just a, a way of keeping up with it. This is the council tool tool woodcraft Another red nose leather sheath This comes with a, a nice leather sheath from council tool, but I've misplaced it um, This is their woodcraft 20 Four inch handle. That one's uh, the the Gransford's Scandinavian is 25. This one's 24 inch handle. And it's just a good all around size. It's not heavy. You know, if you've got a, a a backpack that has some type of side pocket or straps on the side that you could lash it to, you can you know, easily take it on a backpacking trip. You know, wintertime trip. We are going to be processing a lot of wood for fire cooking or whatever. And um, it's just a great all around axe. I use it a lot for like like I said, limbing. You know, limbing trees that have been chainsawed down and. And uh, I've split, you know, smaller pieces of wood with it, and just just a great all-around axe. And council tool, I believe, is American made. Uh, in North Carolina, I believe. Yeah. All right, last up for axes for me is uh, is our Gibson axe, uh, designed by James Gibson. I actually have one of his original prototypes that that he hand forged. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to paracord wrap this so I can really choke up on this. This axe excels at carving and just basically a little small camp axe. A lot of people feel like it's probably too small to do much work with, but, but you can do a lot you of work with this. Um, One thing I love about it is you could slide that in your back pocket, cargo pocket, and I have. You know, it's just a lightweight, easy to carry little hatchet. That it, it gets way more work. You can get way more work out of it than what you probably realize. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Doing our bushcraft classes, um, I felt like I used this uh, wildlife axe for I don't know how many classes, and and trying to carve spoons and cooks it and other thing with James, um, that'll wind up working on your forearm. Yeah. And and I did I never really realized that. So uh, the light weight of this gives me uh, way less fatigue, uh, greater precision yeah. of, of what I'm trying to do. Uh, and also, man, this thing works like a knife if, whenever, uh, I mean, it's sharp and I can do a feather stick with this thing about like I can a knife. So, uh, the addition of the paracord for me is really what oh, yeah. kind of completes yeah. it. Uh, whenever we first started talking about this, we talked about bringing the scales all the way up, but we were afraid people would bust them off yeah, whenever we're splitting, splitting. something, you'd, you'd bust it off. So the paracord wrap makes it nice. Um, I have, this is my, uh, this is our production one and then my, um, my actual real one that's forged, I think it has a, a red nose leather sheath on yep. it as well. All right. That, is, that ends it for axes right now. Patrick, what about saws? Uh, another company you probably heard of is Silky. This is the Silky Gone Boy. Not sure on the length of this blade, uh, the saw blade. Locks into place. You just mash that back to close it. Lightweight, you can stick it in your pocket, um, drop it in your backpack, side pocket, whatever. Um, one thing with Silkies, they cut extremely well, but they do have a very thin blade, so you, you have to be smart and not just jump into it, you know, uh, going for broke, going, you know, crazy with it. Uh, let the saw do the work, that thin blade is going to cut great. Um, if, you, if it binds in the cut and you're being overzealous with your sawing, I have seen some break, usually like the last inch of the, the blade will snap where it binds and you, somebody just powers through it and snaps the blade. Um, but this one I've had a couple of years and I've been, you know, been really careful with it, sawed a bunch of wood and it's, you know, hanging in there doing great. I have done this before, I promise. So this <laughs> is a Svensol, S-V-E-N Svensol. 
Uh, prior to coming on at Randall's, uh, I was a uh, I owned a bike shop and I have been on a trail crew for years and years and years. And I have always bounced back and forth between carrying the saw I'm going to show next and a spin saw, uh, a collapsible bow saw uh, that's lightweight aluminum. It cuts like a banshee. Mm. Uh, I have two sizes, the 15 and the 21 inch. I generally carry the fi carry the 15 more just because it fits better in a backpack. Um, gives me plenty of room here if I want to saw in between, and it just it's always performed well for me, and it, it doesn't come with, with a huge weight penalty. Gives me a little more cutting surface than what most you're going to get mostly with your folding saws mm -hmm. and other stuff, and it folds up nicely uh, in the backpack. Oh, one thing about a spin saw: if you use a spin saw has this wing nut back here. So I suggest doing two things. Number one, a liberal dose of blue Loctite on this screw that comes, this bolt that comes through so it's tight going on and off. Uh, and then also, there's normally a little leather strap that hangs here uh, <laughs> that I had to cut because I lost a wing nut. And I always keep, I just go to uh, the Home Depot or wherever and I always buy another uh, wing nut as a backup and I keep it on my little leather strap, oh, okay. but I cut that strap and this is my backup, so it's time to re-up that. That's cool. Um, but that's a that's kind of a good tip for someone that's used one of these for a long, long time. Without the wing nut, it does you, that doesn't work. <laughs> right, next, one of the coolest things that we um, picked up, James and I picked up when we went up to Caramount Wilderness Ways in Canada last year, this is the Harleton H buck saw. It's an improvised buck, expelled expedient buck saw. Kelly Harleton, the lead instructor at Caramat, uh, taught this to us, and, and I asked him after the class if James and I could start teaching that in the bushcraft classes, you know, as long as we gave him credit, and he told us that that's what the, the it's meant for. The knowledge is meant to be shared and spread around. And so, we've you know, the, every bushcraft class since then, I've always taught this, and I've done it in a few Essie days at Smoky Mountain Knife Works and stuff like that. The concept is you can just take the bow saw blade. You can pick these up. You know, when I do them for classes, I'll pick them up at Lowe's, you know, Fiskers. Um, bow saw blade's about $5, uh, so it's cheap. That can be rolled up small and put in your cook pot. Um, some, I've seen where some people have had a like a leather money belt where that fits in the slot. I've even seen where people have taken um, the... Flat webbing, tubular webbing, uh, tubular webbing, and it, it could slide down in there. And so it's just a way of carrying it so you've always got it with you when you're out in the wilderness. And then two bolts and two nuts. You don't have to use the bolts and nuts here. You could also just cut a wooden peg, um, a split ring, like off a keychain. You know, just anything that's going to keep it from pulling through. And it's just a cool way. It's the Harleton H because it kind of makes a couple of H's when, it, when it's built. It's opposing windlasses. Uh, Kelly's got a, a video on YouTube, uh, Kelly Halton does, on building one of these, and it explains the whole process. Um, the triangles, you know, add, give it added strength. It's the most secure way uh, of doing it. You may have seen some buck saws where it's just a single loop of paracord or whatever and one single windlass. Uh, this is very secure. This is actually the one I made in class, and, and it hangs on the wall, and it, it hasn't been loosened or anything, and it's still very, very tight. So. The Kelly Halton, Halton H. Bucksaw. It's always cool to see our students at our classes make these things, yeah. and they can walk. They will walk away with something they made that that that's actually very useful. And, and the fact that it kind of looks old school too yeah. makes it even that much cooler. Uh, I've got a couple of those that I make made, and I take a lot of pride in every one I've made and like and still like to use mm -hmm. them. So to to have students build them in class and then use them in the very same class is always a cool process. Yeah, sometimes when we do a class, if we're doing friction fire or whatever, the student at the end of the class might leave some of their, you know, bow drill parts laying around and, and not take it with them. We haven't had any saws left behind. They've always taken it, you know, with them after the class. <laughs> well, before I get into our last saw here, let me stop and just say thank you. If you watch this video for this long, you are definitely one of our people. You get who we are, you get what we're about, and we're very grateful for that. So because of that, we're going to drop in a very large giveaway in this video. Now, recently we cleaned out a room in our office in the, in the uh, SE and Randall's Adventure and Training Global Headquarters down in Gallant, and we came across a treasure trove of ancient SE stuff. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to drop in some uh, B-roll on top of this. You're going to see an Azula hat. 
you're going to see an original RTAC. You're going to see an SE and a DPX Hess coffee mug, a shot glass, some patches that you haven't been able to get in years, along with a carabiner. There's an actual metal Azula plate that came out of our, um, our laser cut machine at Rowan that's been powder coated. I mean, this is the type, this is the type of deal that's going to go to a collector or somebody that's going to really appreciate it. All you have to do is just type subscribed in our YouTube comments. We're not going to share this. We're not going to, the only way you're going to know about this giveaway is by watching the video to this link. Uh, we would appreciate it if you would share our videos amongst mo multiple places, but I'm not going to require that for the giveaway. I just want you to put in the comments, subscribe, and we'll choose a winner from that. Uh, and I'll, I guess we'll give it about seven, 10 days and then we'll pick a winner and we'll go from there. Uh, I'll contact you directly. Um, and, and, and on YouTube and we'll go from there all right now last up is is my personal uh, favorite is just the Baco Laplander nothing special about it other than it works you can get blades pretty easy for it uh, they're not it's 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 less expensive than a silky a little more expensive than a Corona which you can get at other places which we use quite a bit too Coronas have served us well um, I think Jeff has a Felco that he really likes um, all too often, people overlook a handsaw mm. of some type. Uh, you don't see like a lot of real big axes for uh, from us because we spend a lot of time in the woods. But this is this is one thing I go into the woods with every time is I always have a handsaw. Whether we're doing bushcraft or search, search and rescue yeah. operations, there have been times we've had to cut a patch of roto to clear a sked or 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 a. Um, a Stokes basket to clear a patient out. Uh, there's just immeasurable number of uses for a handsaw. So this is one piece of kit that we always recommend going into the woods with. This is always either in my Hill People Gear chest rig or uh, or somewhere stuffed in a pack. Baco Laplander's a beast. I've, I've loaned it to students in classes and you know uh, had them you know use them for all kinds of stuff and it, it's it's never failed. It's never. I've bent the blade. Bend it back. Bend it back and yeah. keep hammering keep down. <laughs> um, so this brings us towards the end of our uh, of our video. We would love to hear more suggestions from you on what you would like to see in the terms of, of favorite gear. Uh, we're going to rack up wrap up with a real quick pocket dump. Patrick, right. what are you carrying today? No, I'm I'm fairly boring. At the Outrider, truck keys, a big lighter. What, what do you got on your side right here? Oh, that's the, uh, the LT. That's the LT we talked yep. about last time. It's okay. all dusted. I'm kind of the same way. This is my just my standard Spyderco PM2 and M390 uh, Streamlight ProTac 1 AAA or, yeah, 1 AAA. Um, I just find that to be super useful. Uh, and then I'm sure there's a Glock 19 or something laying around <laughs> here somewhere. Um, but uh, that's it. Remember... Uh, what we talked about a little earlier and what you need to put in the comments down below. Uh, just one word. Y'all be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thanks.